Hello everybody. Left behind in a property that we recently purchased was a 10 gallon shop vac brand shop vac with a stainless steel tub on it. The three wheel one. I don't think they make them anymore but I drug it out and plugged it in and it turned on but it would immediately turn itself back off. That was because of this rubber boot right here is a little bit deformed. Sits atop a rocker switch so when you turn it to the on position there was just enough tension left on this side to shut it back off. Temporarily, I just took it off there. Been using the vac, it works great. I may try to warm this up, heat it, expand it, who knows. But another issue with it was it was missing the front wheel. I don't have the vac with me, I just got the piece I need to work with. There's supposed to be a caster socket in here with a two inch caster. And the caster itself is not really a swivel caster. It's a solid shaft fixed caster so to speak but it's bulbous on the end and bulbous down towards the middle i can buy those parts but why this is an old shepherd caster that had a flat spot on it that's on the, that was on the chair i'm sitting in so i ran it across my bench grinder at an angle and trued the wheel up so this is what i'm going to be putting on it and it is a true ball bearing swivel caster so this is technically an upgrade to the vac what I need to do is make a socket or a bushing that will go in here and accept this shaft. I'm going to be using a piece of 7 8 Delrin to do that. And we're going to go ahead and machine this thing and see if we can get this caster to fit this hole. And then it's going to work for me just fine. So let's get underway. Alright, well this is what I'm going to turn out. I'm going to be taking the OD of this Delrin down to 814 thousandths. Uh, I give myself a little bit of wiggle room there, so that's not really critical of a dimension, nor is this 157 thousandths right here on this flange. And we're going to have uh, 1875 right here. Again, left myself a little bit of room to play. The only two dimensions I need to pay heed to are this 613 thousandths right here, this OD, and then I'm going to have a through hole that is uh, 7 16 or 437 and a half thousandths. Now, it doesn't even need to be this long. I'm making it that long because I've got room down in there. It will help secure it uh, to where it doesn't just want to come out, as well as with this punch through hole down the center if I wanted to put a caster on it later that had a longer shaft sticking up that gives me room to play all right well the through hole in my lathe the maximum stock I can put to its three quarters so I need to lop this off into a manageable piece where I can chuck it up I'm starting with four inches in length here <laughs> We're going to see how this goes. I got a new camera a while back and it actually has two cameras on it. So you can see the picture in picture down here. I'm trying to get close to the work as well as see what's going. So you can see what's going on with the dials. How it turns out, who knows. Anyway, got my piece chucked up in here. Have my facing tool on. I'm just going to come in and face this off. Looks good to me. Change this tool out to a different one. We're going to go with this one here. Just going to shoot most of this in real time. Come up here. Make sure I can get far enough back to suit my needs. I needed to be at the end of it just over two inches. 
Yeah, that's going to give me plenty. I'm just going to ride close to the chuck there and then I'll turn it off. So that looks good. Now I'm just going to come in and touch off here. So there's my touch off. But instead of zero in my dial right there, I'm going to put it oh, just a couple of thousands before zero. And then I'll turn it up to zero. Looks good right there. Well, let me turn on a feed here. I'm just truing this up so I can take a measurement and see how much I want to reduce it. Not sure where I'm at. We're just going to fire it up right there and see what happens. Shut it off right there. It's not true up just yet. I'm going to back out of this. I'm going to go ahead and put a center drill in the end of it. This stuff is going to want to move around. So I'll just stick a center in here. Change my tool out. I don't think you can see the tail stock. Find the center. Let's put this up in here and just give it a little bit of load on there. Okay, I'm going to start that process over. touch off back here. I'm going to take it up to maybe five thousandths after I touch off. So five thousandths before zero, bring it up to zero. I'm going to increase my feed rate, speed that up some, just to knock this first pass down. So here we go again. help if I would engage my lead screw, wouldn't, wouldn't it? Okay, I'm just going to shut it off where it sits. Now I've got a clean pass all the way around it. Basically what I'm going to do here is look at my measurement that I want and it looks like it's 814 thousandths. So I'll make sure my indicators are zeroed out and they are. I'll bring this up to 814 thousandths. So there's my 814 and I'm going to zero my dial or zero my calipers here. So now I'll take a measurement and it's going to tell me how much I need to take off. And I need to take off, it looks like 62 thousandths, 61 thousandths. So I'm going to take 50 of that right now. I'm going to go ahead and back back out here since I'm already on my true zero. 
I'm going to run it up to 50 on the dial. Now I have direct reading dials. That means if I dial in 50, it reduces the, di the diameter by that much. Uh, Non-direct reading dials are standard dials. If you want to take off 10 thousandths, you dial in 5. Hope that makes sense. So I'm going to run this and see how it works. Here we go. Should peel it off quite nicely. With this Delrin, I could probably take the whole lot in one shot. This stuff is really nice to turn. I've got a nice surface finish going on. I don't know if you can see that. I could probably increase my feed here, but I'm not going to. Keeping my eye on this gap right here. And we're getting close to the jaws, and we're going to stop it right there. Clear this stuff out of there. Let me take a measurement real quick and see where I'm at. Yeah, it's saying I need to take 13 thousandths. No, I'm lying. Yeah, yeah 13 thousandths is what I need to take. Since this measurement is really not all that critical, I'm going to take it right now. So there's 10 and 13. Double check that. Make sure I'm still on the positive side of zero, and I am. And I'll run this down through there, and then we'll take a final measurement. All right, well, I've pulled my center out, changed to a different tool. I'm going to set this one up to where I've got a lead angle on both faces so I can turn right into a corner or a relief angle for that matter. So I've got clearance behind the cutter there a little bit more. And then I'm going to bring it out here and make sure I have clearance on this face a little bit more this way, just doing it by eye. And that looks good. Now I'll lock this tool in. I need to come down from this face one inch, 875 thousandths. So one and seven eighths. So I'm just touching off right here, and there is the end of my work. I'm just going to do this with a scale. So I'm going to back my cross slide out here, and then I'm going to wheel down the work to one and seven eighths if I can get in here to see I really need to put my head over there but I'm trying not to so there's one and seven eighths right there coming down to the end of the work that looks good right there so there's my my length I don't know if you can see this but I'm gonna bring up my micrometer stop here and just lock it down And then when I turn down, I'll just bump that stop. And after I get it to diameter, then I'll just bring my cross slide out and it will face that off down there. Double check my measurement. 1875. Looks good. And now it's just a matter of coming in, facing off, or touching off again. I'll turn a little section. It's just the way I like to do it. You can turn things, measure, and do the math. But I like the tools to do the math for me. So in this case, I'm going to turn the feed off just so we can fire this up and touch it. There it is. Same principles before, about five before zero. Bring it up to zero. And that will establish my definite true zero. I'm actually going to increase the speeds a little bit more just to see if we can remove this material a little faster. Always doing that. 
for getting my feed. I just messed it up, see? I wasn't paying attention. So there's basically my touch off and then I'll do the same thing. And we'll just run in here. enough right there turn it like so I've already got my caliper zeroed for 613 thousandths so it's looking like I need to peel off about 196 thousandths yeah 196 since this material is so forgiving I'm going to go to a hundred thousandths see how we do I can't bring my center back in so here we go anyway there's no problem it's loving that I'm just gonna shut it off and take more I said 196 there's a hundred, ten, twenty, forty. We'll go a hundred and fifty. Get us closer to it. And before I shoot this part in the foot. Just going to double check and make sure I've still got more. Yeah, I've got about 57 or 58,000 to go. So here we go. I'm watching my stop down here. This gap close up. Once I get fairly close to it, I'll turn the feed off and I'll take it the final bit by hand. I'm getting there. And there we go. And I'll run this in by hand until I stop. There we go. That's the end of it. So I'll go ahead and take another 50. I'm going to double check, make sure I didn't read the dial wrong. So I'll just shut it off right there, make sure. Yeah, that's actually reading me two thousandths too small. Am I wrong? That's two thousandths too small. I must have read my dial wrong but since I've got a little section turned let's see if it wants to go anyway oh yeah it looks like I'm gonna have to sneak up on that I'm just winging it here I'm gonna go ahead and take about another four thousandths off I'm just gonna turn it down till that thing starts going in there claim to be a machinist but I'm going to get this piece made yeah that goes in there there should be a little bit of draft in that too you know what I'm going to I'd rather it be kind of a press fit 
I'm going to back that back down to 10. Take out my backlash there. I may be getting too overzealous. Extract the tool from the work. I'll do that. Okay, I'm at 10. So I don't put a scratch down it. It doesn't really matter on this, but yeah, we're going with that right there. I'm going to say we're on size. I'm glad I backed that up just a little bit. That's a nice, nice fit. Okay, so I'm going to come in and finish that shoulder off there. Come back into my 10. Right there. I'm basically coming in until I hit this stop. I will lock my cross slide, or my carriage rather, like so. And then I will uh, turn the dial out. Don't need feeds for this. Looking good, here we go. Face this off. And that's that. Change to another tool. Put a chamfer on the end here. Same thing. So that's that. I've got a little section here that's turned down a little more shallow, but that's okay. At this point, I need to pierce the hole before I part it off. And I'm just going to go through with the size 64th under. And I want to make sure I get all the way back beyond this. I'm not going to run a smaller drill down through there. I don't think we're going to have any problems here whatsoever. So about like that. And here we go. that where it sits and it may have drilled an oversized hole no nope. a little undersized just what I wanted and I've before I run out of travel I'm going to turn it on and push this in by hand and then I'll continue cranking <laughs> Just Delrin. Shouldn't do that anyway. Just 
just ran out of travel. Let's see how deep my hole is. Let's pull this out. Yeah, maybe not. Just gonna stick this in here. Get a rough idea on how deep I am. I'm two and a half, so that should be well beyond what I wanted. And what I'm going to do now is ream that hole to size. I don't really have chucking reamers. I've got a 7 16 hand reamer, so we're going to chuck it up. Do it that way. normally slow my legs down but I don't feel like bending over so we're gonna try this and see how it goes here we go just sliding my tail stock up so I can get more purchase there And I just bottomed out. Let's see what we get. It's going to go once I get that clip started. Yep, sure is. That's exactly what I was hunting for. I need to find my Champering tool. I'm just going to chamfer this inner edge right here, and then we're going to part it off. All right, well, I've got my parting tool set up here. Just simply reference the front face of the chuck to line that up. I just came in here with a rule, and I need 157 thousandths for that shoulder right there, the height of it. So I gave myself 3 sixteenths on the rule. Once I get it parted off, I'll turn around and I'll face it to its proper dimension. Carriage is locked down, everything's looking good. I'm going to face this off in high speed. I typically go a little slower than this, so I'll be turning the dial a little faster than normal. So here we go. And there it is. Get this carriage out of the way. Finish with my stock here. Wipe my jaws out. And we will chuck this back up right here. Right to the face. Not too tight because I don't want to deform it since it now has a hole in it. I need to go back to the facing tool. Let's see what would be the best way to do this. Well, I know I'm just trying to give different ideas to do things. Typically, I would come in here, face this off, know that's a zero, and then run my dial back, meaning my micrometer stop. But I know I'm touching this surface right here, so I'm going to try to just contact this jaw. So there's my jaw. I'm just going to simply lock that down real quick. And I'll bring my stop up here to a zero roll it right to zero and I'll lock this down if 
fiddling with it. They kind of want to move around on you, so I'm double checking things. And I should have done this with a dial indicator, it would have been a lot faster. A little bit more. There, fine, zero. All right. Now I'm going to move this out of the way and I'm going to run this, what did I say, 157 thousandths. So there's 50, 1, 50, there's 150, 5, 6, 7, 157 thousandths. And if you ask me, that looks like it's about right. So we're just going to face down to that mark and see what we get. Just kind of playing around at best. Let's see how close we did. This caliper is good enough. Zero these out. Alright, try to get in here. See if I can get a measurement here. If I can hold still, that's 157 thousandths on the nose. Break that outer edge if I can get to it with this tool. It's pretty close. Get my stop out of the way. It's all the setup time that takes all the time there. Yeah, I can just barely squeeze in there. Okay, here we go. Good. I'll just run this one by hand. And there it is. Clean it up and we'll test it. All right. Well, there it is completed. We're getting ready to find out together if it's going to work. Turned out as planned, with the exception of this little area I turned undersized. Nobody but you guys is going to know that's there as soon as it goes down in this hole. So let's see if it fits in there. So far, so good. There's that. That's never coming out of there again. Hopefully I can get the caster in here on the bench. I may have to put it in my lap. So we'll find out. Didn't even have to hammer it in. Well, that was the solution to my problem. Had everything on hand, didn't cost me a cent to do it, just a little bit of my time. I'll put it back together and this shop vac is ready to roll. A little bit long, but it is what it is. Thanks for watching guys, and good luck.